a constitutional volcano, that has been dormant for 123 years, shall soon erupt. Por, por, por talaga yan. Kasi 98% poor tayo. Ang 2% na yan, billion-billion, na sa kamay ng iilang tao lang sa Pilipinas. Gusto ko sana, kaya hindi lang pwede. Ano ibig ko sabihin? Revolusyon. Kaya ninyo. O takot kayo? Takot kayo o kaya ninyo? In the year 1957, on March 17, the President of the Philippines died in a mysterious plane crash. Was it an accident? Fast forward to year 2021. Many were hoping the vaccines will cure the disease. Growing scientific evidence tend to prove that the vaccines are as dangerous, if not more dangerous, than the virus itself. If China vaccine kills the President tomorrow, Will the Vice President of the 1987 Constitution rejoice? Or will a revolutionary government explode? If an assassin, or China vaccine, or a mystery kills the President tomorrow, before year 2022, then the Vice President of the 1987 Oligarch Constitution becomes President. Or will she? Not so fast. There is a constitutional problem. A constitutional problem calls for a constitutional solution. There is a constitutional solution. The original sovereign constitution of our ancestors is still alive today. If an assassin, or China vaccine, or a mystery, kills the president tomorrow, before year 2022, will oligarchs continue oppressing the people? by simply transferring their investments to the political party of the constitutional successor? Constitutional successor? Which constitution? The 1987 constitution? Not so fast. There are two constitutions in force in the Philippines today. The 1987 constitution is just one among the two. What is the other one? There shall rise a revolutionary government council led by, quote, the seven best public servants, unquote, establishing a resurrection government under the original sovereign, Sally Gang, but thus, that has, since year 1899, been dormant for 123 years, but is now ready to erupt as a constitutional volcano. We can learn lessons from the American Revolution. The United States was originally just a colony of the British Empire which imposed heavy taxes. American taxpayers demanded voting power in exchange for taxes. The British Empire said no. Taxpayers rebelled. The rebels won. Tax rebellion gave birth to the United States of America in the year 1776. The rebels wrote their own constitution. There are important provisions in their constitution that made them a great nation. How and why did the United States become a superpower? There were at least three important fundamental principles in their constitution that made America great in the 19th century and first half of the 20th century. We can summarize the set three important fundamental principles in an acronym consisting of three letters, FPJ. No. I am not referring to that popular actor in the Philippines known as FPJ. What do I mean by FPJ? F stands for federalism. P stands for poll tax empowering taxpayers to vote in budget decisions. J stands for jury justice system. Let us compare with Philippine history. Do you remember the Doug Gohoy rebellion? It was the longest rebellion ever in Philippine history, starting from the year 1744 and lasting for around 85 years until the year 1828. Peace talks between Spain and Doug Gohoy rebels led to mutual respect agreements, such as recognition of the province of Bohol as a canton or federal regency unit, following the Swiss canton model. Swiss type canton federalism has been in the Philippines as early as 1890s. Please see the archaeological evidence in the picture. Zoom in closer. The inscription above reads Canton de Bohol. The inscription below reads Pueblo de Marie Bohoc which is one of the towns in the province of Bohol. Another interesting archaeological stamp identifies the years. It says 1898 and 1899. It even says the government is regional and revolutionary. 
It identifies its location as the province of Bohol in Visayas. Speaking of revolution, let us trace back to year 1892, on July 7th, or, Holyoke 7. That was the date of the arrest of national hero Dr. Jose Rizal. In the evening of the arrest of Dr. Jose Rizal, a coalition of patriots led by seven leaders held an emergency meeting. That meeting gave birth to the historical Katipunan. The original Katipunan government was collective. It was led by at least seven persons. It was not under the dictatorship of any single individual. After the arrest of national hero Dr. Jose Rizal, the prominent successor became another national hero known as Andres Bonifacio. Andres Bonifacio was not a dictatorial leader. He led by example. The important point here is that leadership was collective. Leadership was parliamentary. Leadership was not dictatorial. Both Dr. Jose Rizal and Andres Bonifacio died as martyrs of the revolution. The teamwork parliamentary leadership of the Cat T. Poon deteriorated into a one-man individual dictatorship led by General Emilio Aguinaldo. The dictator, General Emilio Aguinaldo, held the position of president. Then came the Declaration of Independence in the year 1898, on June 12, around the residence of General Emilio Aguinaldo, which is in the town of Cowit, in the province of Cap Vitec. Many are not aware that there were also other declarations of independence in other regions of the Philippines. There were federal regencies in Visayas that kept on the Katipunan tradition of collective parliamentary leadership instead of one-man presidential dictatorship. An example of parallel declaration of independence was the one held also in the same year 1898, on October 28, in the town of Santa Barbara, in the province of Ilo Ilo, led by President Martin Delgado. Why is the height of the central flagpole in Santa Barbara Ilo Ilo as tall as the height of the central flagpole in Manila? There is a purpose for equalizing the height of both flagpoles. The purpose is to emphasize equal mutual respect between the National Capital Region and cantons, or federal regencies, in Visayas, and Mindanao. Another example of parallel declaration of independence was the one held also in the same year 1898, on November 5, in the Necros Island region, led by the Lok Sun family and the R. Runnet Tuff family. Passed forward to year 1989. On February 10, Congress enacted Republic Act 6709, declaring November 5 each year as a regional holiday, commemorating the Necros Declaration of Independence. Rewind back to year 1898. The 1898 Parliament in Barroso Wayne, Mololos, wrote a constitution that restored the teamwork of the seven best public servants that shall lead a revolutionary government council. Barroso Wayne, in the town of Mololos, province of Bulacan, was chosen as the temporary seat of power of the national government because the location of Mololos was a safe distance away from war zones in Manila. Around 210 delegates from all over the archipelago assembled in Barroso Wayne. There were representatives from Sabah. This is an important point when comparing the 1899 Constitution with the 1987 Constitution. Sabah is part of the Philippine territory under the 1899 Constitution. This is a photograph of the promulgation ceremony of the 1899 Constitution inside the Bar R. Sowain Church. The original 1899 Constitution was written in Spanish language. An acceptable millennial English translation may read the front page title as follows. Political Constitution of the Republic of the Philippines, promulgated on the 22nd day of January, year 1899. Newspapers of general circulation at that time published copies of the 1899 Constitution. Article 4 of the 1899 Constitution forbids dictatorship. Leadership shall be parliamentary. The president is the head of state, but the parliament heads the government. Let us look at the organizational structure of the government under the 1899 constitution. At the grassroot level are the towns. A town may be either a municipality or a city. Clusters of provinces unite into a popular assembly. A popular assembly is equivalent to a federal regency. A regent heads a regency. Around 210 delegates nationwide assemble as Parliament Solons in the 1899 Parliament. The term of each Solon is four years. 
Parliament members shall elect, from among themselves, seven exemplary members, to serve for one year, in a permanent commission, which is like a Senate that does not legislate, but rather a Senate that concentrates on impeachment court functions. We will refer to the permanent commission as, the Justice Tribunal, because, most of its duties focus on impeachment court functions. Parliament shall elect cabinet ministers. Parliament shall also elect seven best public servants. Do you remember our earlier discussion about the Kati Punan tradition of letting seven best patriots lead the Revolutionary Government Council? The 1899 Constitution enshrines that Kati Punan tradition by incorporating the concept of seven best public servants into its Article 73 and Article 99 of the 1899 Constitution. We may refer to the said seven best public servants as the seven czars. They are like interagency ministers. The Prime Minister is the first among equals among the seven czars. There is also a Vice President. The highest position goes to the President. However, the President is not a powerful dictator, at least in theory, if not in practice. Most appointments to top positions are done by the Parliament. The President asserts his power to appoint only when there is a need to fill up a vacancy. Imperialism sabotaged the 1899 Constitution. Philippines fell under American imperialism from 1900 to 1940. Japanese imperialism took over from 1940 to 1945. Philippines may fall down again to China imperialism. Rewind back to year 1899. Approximately a million Filipinos died from genocide in the bloody hands of imperial American military firepower. The 1899 Constitution has been in hibernation ever since then. Fast forward to year 1935. United States gave a constitution to the Philippines known as the 1935 Constitution. Please look at the picture. There, we can see President Franklin Delano Roosevelt, together with War Secretary George Henry Dern, in the act of ratifying the Constitution. The picture is very revealing. Who must take center stage in a historically important event such as the promulgation of the Constitution of the Philippines? Of course the President of the Philippines must take center stage. Did he? What we see in the picture is a pecking order of who is the boss, and who are the downliners. The boss is obvious. United States President Franklin Delano Roosevelt is the boss. Who must come in at second place? Logically, the President of the Philippines must be at least in tandem with the President of the United States. But no. The second spot goes to the War Secretary of the United States. Was the Philippines in a state of war in the year 1935? Where is the President of the Philippines? In the right edge of the picture, we can see that the President of the Philippines was merely a photo bomber who almost fell off away from the right edge of the frame of the photograph. Let us now focus on the nitty-gritty details of the 1935 Constitution. Federalism was proven good in America. Why did the 1935 Constitution copy most of its provisions from the United States Constitution, but chopped off the chapter on federalism for the Philippines? Worse, the 1935 Constitution demoted Philippines, from the prestige of being the first with parliamentary form of government in Southeast Asia, down to the inefficient presidential form of government, where the president is a dictator against his own people, while serving as puppet under an imperial power. How about poll tax system, which was the spark of the American Revolution, and which was proven to be effective against pork barrels in America? Why did the 1935 Constitution delete the provision on poll tax system? Do we realize now the reason why the Philippine government is full of pork barrels? How about the jury justice system, which was proven successful, not only in America, but in many other first world countries? Why did the 1935 Constitution junk jury justice for the Philippines? The 1935 Constitution forgot to repeal the 1899 Constitution. Let me repeat for emphasis. The 1935 Constitution forgot to repeal the 1899 Constitution. That means the 1899 Constitution is still alive until now. All subsequent constitutions forgot to repeal the 1899 Constitution. Fast forward to years 1940 to 1945. The Japanese Imperial Army installed a puppet Congress led by Ben Igno Akki no Sr. 
That puppet Congress wrote the Mickey Mouse Constitution which forgot to repeal the 1899 Constitution. Fast forward to year 1973. The 1973 Constitution of Ferdinand Marcos forgot to repeal the 1899 Constitution. Fast forward to year 1986. The People Power Revolution was another act of sovereignty by the people. Please look at the picture. There, we can see men pushing against a huge combat tank full of tough war veteran marines who were threatening to spray bullets to a civilian crowd of protesters. The man wearing white was 20 years old at that time. He is now the author of this video. He is attorney Melchor Mukdamo. The United States government supported the revolutionary government in the Philippines. The revolutionary president of the Philippines appointed 50 individuals to revise the 1973 constitution. The 1987 constitution had a clear opportunity to repeal the 1899 constitution. Did it repeal? There are 27 sections in the transitory article where we see strong words such as amend, revise, repeal, revoke, and other similar words expressing hate against the former dictator. Surprisingly, the 1987 Constitution did not repeal the 1899 Constitution. In Section 27, the very last section of the last article of the 1987 Constitution, we see a sudden downshift to a soft word, supersede. Why supersede? Why not repeal? The transitory provisions were cherry-picking, to let profitable provisions remain effective, while targeting only a few provisions, to make the former president look bad, while making the new president look good. Supersede means to sit over. It is different from amend. It is different from revise. It is different from repeal. It is different from revoke. Look at those chairs. The upper chairs sat over the lower chairs. The upper chairs supersede the lower chairs. But did the upper chairs amend, revise, repeal, or evoke, the lower chairs? Take off the upper chairs, and you will see the lowest chair in exactly the same condition as it was before, prior to the supersede. This is the most interesting picture in this video. We see a lady superseding a man. Did the lady amend, revise, repeal, or revoke the man? Or did the man become more super duper, rather than dead? Ha ha ha. The lady may even end up with the seed of the man, if the lady continues to supersede the man. The 1899 constitution is like the humble house that we can see in the bottom left side of the picture. Then came the 1935, then the 1943, then the 1973, then the 1986, then the 1987 constitutions which are all foreign impositions. An earthquake shook down the ground floor. All other upper floors crumble down. nineteen eighty seven can supersede nineteen eighty six which in turn can supersede nineteen seventy three which in turn can supersede nineteen forty three which in turn can supersede nineteen thirty five supersede can reach as far as only nineteen thirty five but never eighteen ninety nine because eighteen ninety nine was never the ground floor of foreign impositions Introducing Bara So Wayne Restart Barungai Solidarity Initiative Reviving Sovereignty to Achieve Real Transformation No need to beg for votes from at least 200 congressmen. No need to beg for votes from at least 18 senators. The president can achieve his wish for federal parliamentary reforms at a snap of a finger by simply restarting the 1899 constitution. No need to ask permission from the Supreme Court because the 1899 Constitution has its own constitutional court that is not inferior to the Supreme Court of the 1987 Constitution. Only the Constitutional Court of the 1899 Constitution can be the final interpreter of the 1899 Constitution. Sunflower is a movie about a soldier sent to a war far away from home on foreign soil. He suffered memory loss after traumatic war shocks. The soldier forgot his own wife after traumatic war shocks. Same is true for the people of the Philippines. 
the Filipino people forgot about having an original sovereign constitution because of traumatic war shocks. Introducing Anchor Ancestral Honor Recognition. Ancestral Honor Recognition, or Anchor, recognizes the historical fact and legal correctness that the 1899 Constitution is still alive until now. All subsequent constitutions were merely foreign impositions by colonizers. The people, as victim of traumatic war shock, forgot the original 1899 constitution. The president can achieve the same result of revolutionary government, in a very peaceful and intelligent manner, by simple ancestral honor recognition, or anchor, shocking oligarchs into waking up to the truth that the people has an earlier subsisting marriage with the 1899 Sally Gang but Tuss. The second and third and fourth and fifth and sixth shotgun weddings with the 1935 and 1943 and 1973 and 1986 and 1987 oligarch knots are bigamous, and three gum moose and quadragum moose and pentagum moose and hexagum moose bastard affairs that we are presently tied into. The president can untie the knot by simple ancestral honor recognition, anchor, on which he, or we, recognize the 1899 Sally Gang but Tuss, under which he, and or a revolutionary government council of the seven best public servants, shall establish an entirely brand new government that peacefully will coexist with vestiges of the 1987 oligarch constitution, while gradually phasing out the 1987 oligarch constitution. Article 73, of the 1899 constitution, requires establishment of a revolutionary government council consisting of at least seven best public servants, in line with the Kat T. Poonun tradition. Who are the seven best public servants today? If an assassin, or China vaccine, or a mystery, kills the president tomorrow or any time before expiration of his term in 2022, then, will the vice president, of the 1987 oligarch constitution, take over as president? Not so fast. The 1899 Constitution, which is still very much alive and kicking today, points to a different set of successors. A resurrection government, led by a revolutionary government council, consisting of at least seven best public servants, under the original 1899 Philippine Constitution, pose a serious challenge to the 1987 oligarchy regime. The bottom line question is, who are the seven best public servants today? This brings us back to year 1892, July 7, which is the founding date of the Katipunan. July 7, in the Philippine Tagalog dialect, is Julio Itka 7. Huli Itka 7, in Millennial English, means Catch the Seven. Who are the Seven? Let us catch the Seven. Who, Lika 7.